the message for the third Sunday in Advent is entitled, Is There Any Way We Can Still Be Friends? I have been struggling to find a way to stay close, connected, comfortable with people who have always been an important part of my life, but who are now polar opposites when it comes to politics. And so many things are getting politicized right now, including the pandemic. I'm sure a lot of people much wiser than me can offer expert advice, but as a pastor, trying to hold on to friendships and family relationships like so many other people I know, I would like to share a few observations. First, remember there has been something that has created and sustained your important relationships that are now threatened, and it probably never had anything to do with politics. So go back to that common ground, that discovery of shared experiences or shared values that nurtured and sustained the relationship before everything started coming apart four years ago. The Republican or Democrat you may find impossible to speak with or be around right now might be the one who rescued you from the bullies when you were a kid or changed a flat tire when you needed help or shared your dreams when you needed someone to listen to you and advise. They may be the person who came to see you in the hospital or took care of your cats when you went on vacation. The connections can be endless, so retrieve them, remember them, rely on them. Second, do not be a parrot. I remember when Teresa and I thought we wanted a talking parrot, so we started trying to find one, only to realize that many of them who had already learned to talk had learned some foul, with a U, words and phrases, sometimes in multiple languages and dialects, like a southern dialect. We ended up getting a young African gray parrot that was so nervous he picked off all the feathers on his chest and his abdomen. He never learned to talk, but he could do a spot-on imitation of the spin cycle on our dryer and the squeaky brakes on the bus that went past our house about once every hour. The kind of parroting that we all need to avoid is the nauseous repetition of our favorite cable news programs, sometimes word for word. Give me a break. No, give the people you hope to keep in your life a break. Whether the news we prefer is actually fact-based or deliberately fake propaganda, there is just no upside in forcing someone who disagrees with us to listen to what we think is gold and they are certain is garbage. Studies have even shown that the old saying, don't confuse me with the facts, is true. Part of our flawed human nature tells us to try to find information that reinforces what we want to believe, even if we know those beliefs and that information is bogus. Call it, I want to be right, even though I know I am wrong. Another way to try to preserve relationships is to avoid the ain't it awful quicksand. You can only go so far in that direction until you get stuck and the relationship is at risk. The person you are trying to keep in your life may not agree that a particular politician is awful or a particular public policy is awful or a social movement is awful or someone's sexual orientation is awful. Forcing someone to agree 
or disagree with you is a bad idea unless you have agreed in advance to hash it out with some safeguards in place and remain friends when the discussion is over. So reverse the temptation to focus on grievance. Instead of focusing on what you think is awful, find things that you can both enjoy, praise, lift up, share, and support. Start with something simple. Sunshine, nice weather, a job well done, a favorite food, and work your way up to people and ideas, happenings, things you both can agree are pretty great or pretty sad. Finally, I would suggest that you never view any discussion as a matter of winning or losing, or you just might lose someone God intended for you to love and cherish for a lifetime. There is great wisdom in agreeing to disagree or agreeing not to discuss topics that you know will be toxic to the relationship you want to keep. Am I saying to never stand up for what you believe? No, I'm just saying choose your battles carefully. Am I saying there never comes a time when a friendship or family connection cannot be saved? No, but I am saying that a lot of us may be prematurely sacrificing what can and should be preserved. At the end of the day, God does not allow us to hold others in contempt or to throw people away. God certainly does not allow us to think we are the only ones who have escaped being stupid from time to time, or most of the time, as the case may be. One phrase I often use in my preaching and teaching is that we worship and serve a God who helps us find a way when there is no way. I sincerely believe this precept applies to our efforts to save friendships and family ties in these troubled times. It is part of our Advent hope and our Advent reality.